everyone, my name is Katrina Walsall and if you haven't met me before, I am a knitting teacher and designer based in Sydney in Australia. And you can find me online in most places as Oliphant Cat. This is episode 11 of my monthly knitting podcast, On the Needles, and it is now July. So I'll show you what I got up to in most of June. So to begin, in the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. And on that note, it is NIDOC week this week, so I am going to provide some links to resources and things down below about what the week is and where you can find a directory of events and things to do with NIDOC week in your area. I'm pretty interested in checking out an art exhibition that's actually sort of right next to where I normally get lunch on Thursdays. So I'll probably pop into that tomorrow. And also there are a couple of documentaries on SBS and the ABC that I'm interested in checking out. One's called January 26th or the 26th of January, which is about the Indigenous history with Australia Day. And there's another interesting looking one on the ABC, sorry, on SBS called Off Country, which is about high school kids going to a private boarding school in Melbourne. And so I thought that would be interesting to check out as well. So yeah, if you're interested in learning a bit more about Indigenous culture, given the week that it is, then uh, just pop down into the description box. There'll be links to everything throughout the podcast episode in there as well. If you're a regular viewer and are wondering what in the world went on in the last month, yes, I did cut off most of my hair. I do this pretty regularly in the winter, mostly because I want to wear my beanies. <laughs> I just don't like having a ponytail that I have to stick up under my beanies, so I try and get it cut off at the beginning of winter so I can stick my beanies on without having to worry about anything. I got it cut off a bit shorter than I wanted to because I actually wanted to donate my hair and it was just too short at the length that I wanted it. So the hairdresser was like, look, we'll take a couple of extra centimeters off and it'll grow up pretty quickly anyway. So yeah, it's been an interesting month. I also finally don't have a cold. Thank goodness. So <laughs> I get the feeling this is going to be a bit of a longer episode because my voice isn't going to suddenly disappear. And also I have a lot of stuff to show you all. So let's just get into it. Okay, the first section I always have is on the needles, which is my whips and FOs from the last month. And this month it is mostly FOs. So the first thing I have to show you is my golden fern, which is what I'm wearing. Ta-da! Uh, I will stand up and show you it properly in a sec. But if you weren't here last month, this is a pattern by Jennifer Steingas. I think I said stein glass last time. So this is a pattern by Jennifer Stein Gas. She is knit love wool on Instagram. And I knit this mostly from Finita, which is a yarn from We Are Knitters. So it's this purple and the yellow here. And then the orange is from Morrison Sons. I think it's Empire. And then the red and the brown are one of a kind skeins from Three Cats Yarn. I think they were on her everyday sock base. So I watched last month's podcast to see how far I had gotten on the jumper when I last spoke to you. And I hadn't realized how little I had done. So when I talked to you last, I think I had gotten done up to about here on the yoke. And so this month I just went for it. Uh, I finished off the yoke, I got down to the colour work, and then I did all of the colour work. And it was both easier and harder than I anticipated. So, as a way of explanation. I thought that the colour work itself would be difficult, but I think that now that I've done so many of those Christmas stockings, which we'll talk about in a sec, the colour work process is actually pretty easy for me now doesn't feel as onerous as it used to, especially the first time 
that I knit that scarf. So yeah, it feels quite natural and also it's sort of addictive. I get my people love color work actually because every single row is different, at least in this pattern. And so it was just sort of like, ooh, let's see what happens next round. Let's see what the pattern's like next round. Uh, and so I just kept going. The thing that was harder about it that I hadn't really anticipated, and I guess harder is the wrong word. It was just harder to get right. So I did this whole thing on four millimeter needles and it does say in the pattern that you should go up two needle sizes for the color work. And I think I did the whole thing on four millimeters. I may have gone up one needle size. I think I went up one needle size on the color work section. So I did the stockinette in four millimeter and the color work in four and a half millimeter. And I think I should have gone up two needle sizes because, okay, I'll show you the jumper now. So this is the fun bit. It's got the color work at the bottom. And I don't know how obvious it's gonna be on the camera, but it might be easier to see it on the side profile. It's definitely cinching in right here. So my tension wasn't quite as even as I thought it would be. And I thought that I would catch it while it was on the needles. I thought I'd notice that the tension had changed, but I think because the cable I was working with was quite a bit smaller, and the circumference of the jumper, which is what you want when you're knitting in the round. You want the cable to be shorter than the thing you're knitting itself. But because everything was all squished up on the needles anyway, I didn't notice until too late that the color work rounds were tighter than the rest of the jumper. So it's my fault for not swatching. <laughs> Probably should have swatched, but it's also not the worst thing in the world. You can barely notice it really. I think I can just notice it because I am being picky about it. And it works out pretty well because these are the pairs of, this is the pair of jeans that I'm probably gonna wear it with the most. And it sort of cinches in right at the top of the jeans. So that's okay, works out. But yeah, isn't it cool looking? I didn't realize I was making flames. <laughs> it's so silly in retrospect that I didn't notice it, but they're trees, they're meant to be trees. And I picked these colors as like a nice autumnal sort of vibe, but I think against the purple, all of the colors end up looking really vibrant. And so it looks like fire more than trees, <laughs> but either way, it looks pretty cool. It's super comfy. The only thing that I do wish that I'd paid attention to is that the Finita is single ply yarn. So it's going to peel and felt pretty badly, I think. The cuffs are already starting to like felt a bit. So I'm just going to have to keep an eye on that and get at it with my wool shaver. I think this one could do with some sort of regular maintenance just to avoid it pilling too badly. I did end up having to play a bit of yarn chicken with the brown. So if you'll notice here, the bind off around the cuff is actually in the purple. It was meant to be brown, but I had just enough brown to do this part of the cuffs and the bottom part of the ribbing down here. But other than that, the color management was fine. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's very comfy and it's surprisingly warm. So I'm really glad that I've gotten this off the needle so I can wear it. Okay, the next two FOs are a pair of beanies that I don't have because I think Amelia's taking them to daycare. <laughs> I don't know why she took both of them to daycare, but there we go. I get the feeling she wore one and the other one was stuffed in her daycare backpack and she didn't notice. So the first one is the rainbow honeycomb beanie that I showed you guys last month. I finished it off, decided not to add a pom-pom in the end. She was being indecisive about whether or not she wanted to have the pom-pom. And I figured that if I left it off, then you could see the crown better anyway. And I don't like making pom-poms, so it saved me the hassle of making one. I did end up going back and fixing the cast on. 
So if you were here last month, I was talking about how the cast on was in a different color because I was being a little bit silly. I took most of your advice and I didn't use the weird green color. I'm glad that you all talked me out of it because it was a bit odd looking in the end. So I used a sewn bind off. I picked the white yarn out and then I put what was essentially a set of live stitches onto the needles and then I used a sewn bind off with just the plain gray yarn. And that was interesting. I was being quite careful with my tension. I was like, I know that I tend to be a bit tight with these sorts of things. So I was being intentionally quite loose. And then I went and checked on it about halfway through and it was so loose. It was all like wibbly. I don't know, it's hard to explain. <laughs> so I just my tension and pulled a bit tighter and then that made it a lot better. It's okay because at the end of the day, it's the bottom of the brim. So it's the part that's going to get stretched out the most anyway. So I think it'll even out over time. So I posted a couple of pictures of the beanie on Instagram and then also on Facebook in a big knitting group that I'm a part of. And I showed you guys on YouTube and people seem to love it. Everyone keeps asking me for the pattern. So I'm going to publish it. <laughs> So I did a bit of digging and it turns out that it's sort of hard to find rainbow yarn that isn't acrylic and I don't love knitting in acrylic, which we'll talk about in a sec because I have been knitting in acrylic, <laughs> but I ended up finding out that Morris and Sons make an eight ply rainbow yarn. It's called Quartet. It is 70% wool and 30% bamboo fiber. So it's basically everything I wanted. It's really cute and this rainbow is going to look great. So I'm going to publish it in this yarn for the rainbowy color and then just their estate in eight ply for the main color. I know I mentioned that I was thinking of using Bloom from BWM, but the color changes in Bloom are really, really long. Uh, I have a friend. If you don't already watch Cookie Knits, go find Ira on YouTube. I will put a link to her channel down below. Uh, she started a podcast and it's great. But if you go watch her podcast, I think she might have already talked about it. It might just be on Instagram so far. But she's using Bloom in the colorwork yoke of a sweater. And looking at it, the color change is really, really gradual. Even on a full-size adult jumper. So I was worried that if I used it on a beanie, especially a kid's beanie, then the colors just wouldn't really change much in the course of the beanie. So this is only 125 meters and it's already got that many colors in it. So I'm pretty excited to try it out and see how it works up in the beanie. The second beanie that I made for Amelia is this Whew. Okay, so I don't know what came over me. I was just like, oh, it's cold. She needs a second beanie. And I asked her what she wanted and she decided she wanted something black and white. So, okay. Uh, I had been gifted a bunch of random yarn from someone who was de-stashing basically their entire stash, from what I can tell. And in it, there was a ball of Moda Vera Starlight, which I think is 100% acrylic, probably acrylic with a bit of extra something because it has this like strand of very shiny material running through. And because it's shiny, of course she wanted it. So I just made her a plain stockinette beanie. So I started off in, uh, Bendigo Wool and Mills Luxury for the cream. It was in a one by one rib. And that was easy enough. It was eight ply yarn. So I cast on 120 stitches and I used 3.75 millimeter needles and I just went for it for about almost two inches, maybe an inch and a half. And so that was the brim and you know, easy. It's going round and round in circles. And then I switched to the Starlight for the top and I was going to just do plain stockinette on the 3.75 mils and oh my goodness, I just couldn't do it. I got about four rows in, four rounds in 
and I was just hating all of it. Uh, <laughs> I just couldn't deal. It's this. Oh, okay. I think I've mentioned this before. I try not to be a snob about acrylic. If it's mixed into something else, that's totally fine. I've worked with sort of 50% acrylic, 50% cotton or wool or whatever blends before, and it's totally fine. But there's something about certain 100% acrylics that are just squeaky. They feel bad on the needles. I don't know. So basically what I did is that I wanted the whole thing to go faster. <laughs> so I switched to 7mm needles and I held the yarn double. And so that way it just went really, really quickly. Um, after a couple of rounds, I was like, oh, this is too loose. So then I went down to some 6.5 millimeter needles and then yeah, just went from there. I did make it a bit too long. So she wears it with a brim folded up. Uh, turns out the same thing was true of the honeycomb beanie. It's a bit too long. So she wears it with a brim up, uh, but I think that's fine. She can just grow into them and they'll last her for a couple of years. I took pretty detailed notes with the black beanie just because it was so simple that I could just like sort of describe the pattern. So if you're interested, uh, I will put a link to my Ravelry project down below. Okay, the next thing that I have to show you just very quickly is my Christmas stocking. I finally finished it. This is for my nephew. His name is Atlas. Uh, last month. All I had left to do on this was to put in the lining and put in the icon edging. So I did that. It's lined with some just plain cotton material and then the icon edging is done here in the top. If you weren't here around Christmas when I was making this whole set of stockings originally, uh, the way the lining works is that I just sew that on my sewing machine to make the actual stocking shape and then I hand sew it in to the top of the stocking. So I don't know if you'll be able to see that there, but that line of green stitching is where I sewed it in. So yeah, this is why I was feeling comfortable with color work because I made four of these. This is the fourth one that I made uh, over the sort of like October, November, December period. So I'm glad that I did that because now I feel comfortable making color work jumpers. <laughs> but it was one of those things where it took all of an hour, <laughs> even with the sewing machine, to do the lining and the I-cord. So it's like, why didn't I do this earlier? But it's done now, so I can take it to my nephew in America. And the last FO I have for the month is another thing that I can't show you because I don't have it on me, but I will show you pictures. So I crocheted a pillow <laughs> because I have, if you watched my last video, so a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about all of the knitting plans that I have for the winter and all these beautiful yarns and patterns that I want to go through. And for some reason, I decided to ignore all of that and crochet a pillow in 100% acrylic. <laughs> so for some context, my niece turned one in January and her birthday party felt smack bang into the middle of when my family was in lockdown because we had COVID. So we missed her birthday and I realized that it was coming up to her just sort of 18 month birthday. Don't think it's called a birthday, but anyway, she's turning 18 months old tomorrow actually. And I just hadn't gotten her a present yet. So I decided I was going to make her a unicorn cushion. So this is a pattern by Tangle Tree Creative and I'd actually already made one of her patterns before. So I have a friend who's quite obsessed with sloths. So for her wedding, I made her and her husband matching sloth cushions. And when I was buying that pattern, I realized that there was a unicorn as well. So I was like, well, guess I'm going to be making that at some point in the future because there are a lot of small children in my life. <laughs> So uh, there are not a lot of Lincrafts and Spotlights anywhere near me anymore, which is really sad. Uh, so for my friends who aren't from Australia, Lincraft and Spotlight are just the sort of big box yarn stores here. Well, not big box yarn stores, like big store, 
big box craft stores. So you're from the States, just Michael's, Joanne, that sort of thing. Uh, and so I happened to be around where there is a spotlight and I was like, well, guess I should go in because I never get to see one of these. And Amelia was with me. And so we just decided to run around and buy some yarn for this unicorn cushion. So weirdly enough, they didn't have any circle cushions. They only had square ones. So I bought a square cushion insert and I tried to sew it into a circle. And oh my gosh, uh, let me go get it. I will show you my sad attempt at sewing this cushion. <coughs> so it was pretty hard to sew into a circle because the stuffing was already in there and I just wanted to sort of go around the corners. So tried my best, ended up with a weird sad octagon. <laughs> but I figured that the cushion cover would push it into shape. And then the yarn that I got is called Spot Saver USA style, which is just like a very generic sort of acrylic from Spotlight. And then the yarn for the bits and pieces on the unicorn face was this cool ball of rainbow gradient yarn. Yeah, I'm really into the rainbow gradients at the moment. I think it's a function of having a three-year-old. <laughs> but anyway, Amelia picked out this rainbow gradient yarn and it is Lion Brand Mandala. So both of those are 10 ply or worsted weight acrylics. And so I went ahead and started using them for the pillow. Turns out that, okay, so I don't crochet that much, but it turns out that crocheting acrylic feels less bad than knitting acrylic. I feel like if I had tried to knit with the spot saver, I would have lost my mind a little bit, but it was fine actually. So that was that. The pattern is written for bulky or like 12, 14 ply yarn. And I both used a smaller weight yarn and decided to make a bigger pillow. So once again, I was using the pattern more as inspiration than an actual pattern. But I got all the bits and pieces together, making all that hair. Oof, making the hair was a giant pain. Um, but it was nice because I managed to make the different accessory bits, like the horn and the sort of mouth bit, just out of colors that were already in this ball. So I just cut out the sections of the colors that I needed. And then the hair, I just sort of let it go wild with whatever color changes happened in the ball. And yeah, I've given it to Pip. Pretty sure she likes it. She crash tackles things that she loves and she crash tackled this. So <laughs> I'm taking that as a seal of approval. Um, yeah, so that's my unicorn pillow. So whips, I actually only have, I have one sort of whip and only one real one, which is actually my happy place. So I know I've had a lot of whips recently, but it's unusual for me to have that many. Normally I'm a pretty monogamous knitter, so I usually only have two whips max. So this is getting back down to where I normally am, <laughs> which actually feels nice. I get a bit stressed out when I have too many whips. So the first whip, which I will explain why it's not really a whip in a sec, is this cardigan. So, oh my gosh, guys, I can finally show it to you. <laughs> so this is a pattern of mine called crenellations. Uh, it came out on the Knit Picks website um, in the middle of last month on the 15th or 16th of June. So it is a very long sort of sleeveless cardigan and it has this cool lace detail down here on the hem and up here on the like neckline and the shoulders. And it has these columns that run down and connect the two together. So if you're here back in December, I mentioned that I didn't have a lot of whips to show because I spent most of my November making one thing. And this is it. I can finally show it. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the proudest that I've been of a design ever. Probably it was so complicated. I shot myself in the foot a little bit by insisting that the 
triangles at the top and the triangles at the bottom had to line up with these columns in the middle because figuring out where the placement of all the triangles should be on the shoulders and stuff for all the different sizes. There are nine sizes in this pattern. And figuring out how to get the triangles to all line up in all the different sizes was, whew, it was a lot of maths, a lot of spreadsheets. Um, and so I figured it all out and I wrote the pattern and then I knit it and it worked. And then the test knitter knit it and it worked for her too. <laughs> so, yeah. That worked out nicely. <laughs> so this is written for uh, Alpaca Cloud Fingering Weight, which is a 100% alpaca. I was a little worried that it would stretch out with the wear. It definitely stretches out a bit when you block it. It relaxes a lot. I haven't worn this yet, and we'll get into that in a sec. But I figure even if it does stretch, it's an open cardigan anyway, and also it's long, so it'll just sort of, if it stretches out, it'll stretch down, and then it'll just look like a longer cardigan than you had, which I think is fine. Also, it's so light. This is technically fingering, but, which is four ply, but knitting it, it feels more like almost a lace weight. So there are... 200 yards in 50 grams. So it's about a normal sort of four ply yarn. It's a little bit lighter, but it just feels really sort of light. So I think it won't stretch itself out too much. And if you really wanted to, you could knit it just in a regular four ply sock yarn and it will look really good too, just less fuzzy. So the reason that I'm counting this as a whip is, and well, this is also why I haven't uh, worn it yet, is that I actually wanted to make this a proper cardigan. So I didn't add the edging to the sleeve. In the pattern itself, it has a garter stitch edging here on the sleeve sort of cap armhole. <laughs> and so I left that off so I could pick up and add sleeves to it. I have enough of the yarn left that I could probably do that. So I think I'm going to do it. Should be pretty easy. Because this is just a drop sleeve. So I am pretty sure I can just pick up and knit straight and it should be fine. Um, the reason that it does have some shaping, even though that it's a drop sleeve, is that one of the things that I was proud about with this pattern is that I figured out how to make the drop sleeve equal across sizes. So in a lot of drop sleeve patterns, when you get to the larger sizes, the sleeve drops like almost all down to your elbow. And in the small sizes, it's basically up at your shoulder. And so I figured out how to make the sleeve drop equally across all the sizes. So I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, so this is my cardigan. Now the last whip I have to show you, okay, this has a story behind it. So I made this jumper in 2017. It's called the Necessity Jumper. And I've always called it that because it's one of the first things I made in New York and I was cold. And so I made it because it was necessary <laughs> because I didn't have any good winter clothes in my wardrobe, at least not New York winter grade. So if you've been here for long enough, you've probably seen this. Uh, it was written initially for the petite yarn from We Are Knitters, petite wool. And it's a simple raglan. I used this really cool pattern called the Magic Custom No Fit, Magic Fit Custom Fit. I don't know, can't remember. Um, but I'll put a link down below. <laughs> but there's a really cool raglan jumper pattern that's basically a recipe for how to make your own raglan jumpers and so I used that and I put this cool cable detailing down the side of the sleeve and the side of the body and I've been wearing this since 2017. Now around the same time maybe a couple of years later 
This became the first submission I ever made to a third party publication. I submitted it to a book collection for nitpicks and they accepted it. So I was pretty chuffed because I never submitted a pattern to anything before and I got it first time around. But then because of various boring employment visa related things to do with being on a visa in the States, I wasn't allowed to actually publish the pattern with them at the end of the day. So since then, I've been looking for opportunities to publish this pattern because I knew that I did want to publish it as a third party thing. And so I finally managed to make it work with nitpicks. <laughs> and the yarn that I ended up going with is called Wonder Fluff. So it is a, they, okay, here's a contentious part. They call it bulky weight. But Wool and the gang have a yarn called Feeling Good Yarn that is basically exactly the same yarn, and they call it Aran Weight. So for my Aussie viewers, uh, bulky is like 12 pi, and Aran is 10. So I would count it probably, probably as a 12 ply at the end of the day. And so it is pretty fuzzy. It is... 70% alpaca, 23% nylon, and 7% merino wool. I think the nylon is, there's like a tube that runs through it that the fibers are blown into, and that's how they make the yarn. And so that's what the pattern is going to be published in. Now, I know that I said for most of my, or all of my self-published patterns, I was going to publish them in yarn that you could get in Australia. So I am also going to list Feeling Good Yarn as an alternative because I know you can buy that from Hive and Gobbler here in New South Wales. So <clears throat> this is what it's looking like. It is very different to the original sample. This yarn is both fuzzy and light and warm. It is so warm given what it is and it's beautiful. I think when I first got it, I was a little bit not put off, a little bit surprised by it. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so fuzzy and it's just so different to the petite wool that I was like, oh, how am I gonna make this work? So I made the cable a little bit fatter because the yarn knits up at a smaller gauge. So the cable itself needed to be wider, sort of stitch wide, stitch wise. So there's 17 stitches in this cable now, as opposed to, I think maybe there were like 13 or something in the original cable. And I initially swatched in this dark gray and I was getting a bit worried that the cable was getting lost, but I think it looks pretty good here now that there's a couple more repeats in it and looks great in the light color, it really pops. So I've been hoping this would be an FO because I wanted to take photos of it before we left for America because I do not want to bring this to a summer in North Carolina. Because <laughs> if I try and take photos in this in the humidity, I will probably drench it. So <laughs> I got done with the body quite quickly actually and knits up really quickly. It's so nice knitting in 10 or 12 ply yarn after knitting so much four ply. It's just like such a relief. <laughs> it knits up so quickly. And so I went and did the sleeve and I did the entirety of a sleeve the other day. And then I went to try it on and I realized that I had made a bit of a mistake in my maths. <laughs> and the wrist was too tight and the entire sleeve was just too tight and it was way too long. So I frogged it back and I'm redoing the sleeve now. I'm pretty sure I got my maths right this time. So, oopsies, it's over here. So hopefully I can get this done. I don't know, we'll see. I may just have to bring it to North Carolina. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about this pattern. Uh, there's a couple of different things with the grading that I'm quite happy with how I did. So. Um, just to keep proportions all the same, in the larger sizes, the cable actually gets wider just so that it doesn't get lost because if I kept the cable this width for the 
like 60 inch bust size, then it will look really, really tiny in proportion. So I made sure that the cable gets fatter in the bigger sizes. And then also I did some pretty careful shaping with a raglan just to make sure that the arms don't get too giant as the bust size gets bigger. So yeah, this is going to be coming out sometime in August and there will be a call for testers, but I will talk about that soon. So these are all of my whips and FOs. So many FOs, very few whips, which is how I like it really. So the next section is off the needles, which is where I talk about random things that I feel like chatting about, sometimes knitting related, sometimes not. This is a bit of both. So first off, I mentioned a couple of times that we are going to America. So we are leaving on Friday, which is in two days, which is very, very soon. And we're going for a really long time. So we're going for just shy of two months. So it's not really a holiday. We're going to live there. And yeah, it'll be really good. It'll be the first time out of the country since we moved back from America, actually. So late 2019. And I haven't seen any of Wes's family since then. Uh, they haven't seen Amelia since she was one. So that's a bit mind boggling. So it'll be really exciting to be there. Uh, I do have a lot of packing still to do because we're going there to basically live for six weeks. I have a bunch of work that I'm going to bring along. Um, I know I mentioned last month that I was thinking of making a sort of more vlog style video about travel knitting. So I will go through all of the random stuff that I'm bringing along to go to America and yeah, show you all of that. I think I've been overly ambitious in the amount of yarn that I'm bringing and the number of projects I actually can actually get done in two months, but we'll see. So yeah, next podcast episode will be a very different setting. Probably be on the back porch of my in-laws house. So that'll be fun. So pattern tests. Like I mentioned, I have the beanie that's going to be coming out. And then I also have the cable jumper that's going to be coming out soon too. If you're interested in testing either of these, the call for testers is going to come out in the next week or so. Uh, definitely for the jumper, maybe a little bit longer for the beanie. If you would like to get on that, the best way of doing that is to join my mailing list. So there's a link down below to sign up to the newsletter because that's where I do my calls for testers. Uh, and then I only publish them on Instagram if I don't get enough people sign up through there. So make sure you sign up to the newsletter because that's where you'll hear about it first. And yeah, I really love both of these patterns. They're going to be really fun. And I'm excited to do a test because I haven't done one in a really long time. So if you'd like to get in on that, I'd love to have you. So please do sign up. And there are going to be at least two more patterns this year that I'm going to need testing. So even if you don't get in to either of those two test groups, there'll still be opportunities in the future. So it'd be a good idea to hop on the list now so you can see all of them throughout the year. And the last thing I wanted to mention is uh, thank you for all of your feedback about Patreon. A couple of you told me that you would sign up and this is what you wanted to see and you wouldn't sign up and that's also totally fine. I didn't get time to set it up last month and I was looking at it and it does take a bit of effort to actually sign up to Patreon itself just to like set it up in the first place. So I don't know when I'm going to get time to do that, but there is this thing called Kofi, Kofi, I don't know, Kofi, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's some play on coffee as a word, but I don't know exactly how they pronounce it really, but it's a lot lighter weight. You can just sort of buy me a coffee. Um, <laughs> and if anyone who knows me in real life could talk to you, they would tell you that I sort of run on coffee. So Fueling my coffee habit is a good way to make sure these podcasts keep happening. <laughs> so if you'd be interested in that, I put a link down below to where you can buy me a coffee. And yes, thank you to Mel 
uh, my friend from Three Cats Yarn, for encouraging me to do this because it's a lot easier to set up than Patreon. Okay, the next segment is Knitting Clinic, where I answer some of your knitting questions. So today's question isn't actually one that I have written down. It's a question someone asked me just sort of casually in real life, but it was an interesting enough question that I figured I would share the answer with you all too. So I had a friend who was making a lace beanie and she asked me what the best way to block it was because she really needed to block it because it was lace. But also if you block beanies flat on the floor, they get a funny little ridge because you've blocked them flat. So they look around where the edges of the semicircle are when you put them flat on the ground, they get essentially a seam. So the way I always block my beanies is by blocking them on a balloon. So I took some video of me blocking the rainbow beanie. Essentially what you do is you soak it like normal and then you grab a balloon and this is the important part, don't blow the balloon up first. Stick the balloon into the beanie and then blow it up and just keep going until the beanie is about the size and shape that you want it to be and the stitches are as stretched out as you need them to be for whatever it is you're blocking them for. And then what you do is you take the whole thing and you rest it on a cup, so some sort of cup, and that way the bottom of the beanie brim isn't dragging on the floor because if you, you know, if you just have a round thing, it's just going to roll around on the floor. And so if you get a tall enough cup, you can just rest it on there and it keeps the whole thing off the ground. And then it blocks really nicely. So that's my tip for blocking beanies. The last segment is up next, which is where I talk about what's happening in the next month. So we're traveling on Friday, going to be madly packing. Uh, because of that, I think you're going to see a very different set of whips than anything to do with any of this. Mostly because these are all FOs anyway, so I have to start new whips to keep knitting. <laughs> so it's just going to be a bunch of projects that I haven't mentioned before. So that'll be exciting next month. I have carefully planned out what I do think I'm going to knit over there because I do need to bring all the stuff. So, plan all of that all out. One thing that I haven't added to the list is anything from my Winter Knits video. <laughs> so I know I said at the end of that video a couple of weeks ago that hopefully I would have cast on one of them by now, and I haven't. I am going to bring the yarn for the Mayama cardigan that I talked about in that video, uh, but we'll see if we get if I get around to it. That's most of what's been on my mind. It's a pretty big logistical task uprooting your life for a couple of months. So yeah, that's basically what's up next. So if you do want to sign up to the pattern test, make sure you sign up to the newsletter. And other than that, I've been Katrina Walser from All Fine Cat. And if you would like to subscribe to the YouTube channel, there is a button to do that right here. And if you'd like to watch any of the back episodes of this podcast, then there's a whole playlist right here. Other than that, thank you for watching and happy knitting!